ETFs are an, a great buy and hold sort of investment, but they can also be used in this very volatile markets uh, to hedge uh, portfolios. Today we have back Larry Berman, the Chief Investment Officer for uh, ETF Capital Management and the host of Berman's Call. Welcome back, Larry. Now, I did a piece the other day, I was saying basically since 2008, I think we're going for chronic stock market volatility. I don't think we're going to have these good old buy and hold, just live off interest and dividends days. How do you use ETFs to, uh, to help people? Well, it's interesting, uh, John. The, when you look at the returns in uh, stock markets, they average about 7% over the last 100 years, and whether it's stocks, bonds, or um, you know, collective assets. So, but that has a, typically a 20% annualized volatility associated with it. So people think they're going to get nice, smooth returns, but there's a tremendous volatility in stocks. One of the great things that ETFs allow us is to make bearish bets on markets or, or to hedge uh, downside risks. So uh, something like the volatility index, so typically um, when people are panicking, they're running to the options market for protection. That expands and contracts implied volatility and based on options pricing. VXX is a tool that holds the volatility index futures. Uh, so it allows us to hedge our portfolios when stock markets are falling around the world. And, and that's, that's a great thing. I mean, people can't afford uh, as they're retiring specifically and still taking those same dollars out of their portfolio every month, if their value of their portfolios erode to a very, very low level, they can never get back and never get onto their you know, financial track and where they hope to be. So protecting capital in a bad market environment using bear ETFs or volatility related ETFs or hedging uh, vehicles, uh, great strategy for investors. Now you prefer that one you mentioned, the VIX product, to the, for example, the Horizons Beta Pro which the leveraged ETS, as you know, Fair Canada Morningstar sort of warned that these are primarily trading vehicles, not buy and hold vehicles. You agree with that analysis? Oh, absolutely. They're, they're great for short term trading. They give you that two to one daily exposure. But because they rebalance every day, the more volatile the underlying instrument, the worse the erosion to net asset value will be over time because it rebalances every day. So effectively when you're using them, you're buying high and selling low every day. So the more volatile the underlying, the worse it is over long periods of time. For short periods of time, a week, two weeks, they're okay and good for you know, hedging purposes or for those who are more aggressive speculating uh, to make money on the downside. Now, going back to uh, what we talked about in the first uh, segment about you know, basically asset class investing, I'd argue that people know now that ETFs are great equity, uh, long only instruments. Uh, you'd probably say yes, but there's also fixed income. And commodities is one of your particular specialties. So let's talk about what commodity ETFs you'd use to help uh, give a well balanced, protected portfolio. Right. Well, you've got to be careful because most of the exchange traded products, exchange traded notes, that hold commodities in them are commodity futures and they have their own challenges. Uh, backwardation and contango that happen in the futures market uh, can also erode NAVs. Uh, one example for ex is oil. Uh, USO is United States Oil, great ETF for tracking oil. But when it first came out, it was actually priced around $60 where oil was priced. Oil is now $75 and that ETF is about half the value. Why? Because it's tracking the front month oil futures contract uh, and there's erosion because of contango and backwardation. Uh, so the ETFs that have commodities in them may not be appropriate for long-term holding as well unless they're holding the physical product. And so gold and silver have the physical, and, and, and platinum, I believe, have the physical uh, commodities underneath them and don't have that erosion to NAV. So again, investors really need to understand what ETFs and exchange trader products they're buying, especially in the commodity area, because for long periods of time, there still can be some negative consequences. Uh, but for hedging and, and having lower correlated assets to uh, equities, for example, commodities allow that. And typically, the better ones uh, are the precious metals to give you that uh, lower correlation to pure equity market returns. Now, we're out of time, but let, I wanted to talk one last point about uh, fixed income ETFs. Since 2008, a lot of money has been flowing into bond ETFs. We've seen a lot by the Canadian uh, fund companies that come out with all sorts of real return bond ones, corporate bonds, etc. 
Uh, Vanguard had an interesting study a couple of weeks ago, I'm sure you saw it, where they said that this people fleeing bond funds and ETFs just because interest rates are rising wasn't a smart thing to do, that basically you should stay diversified anyway. Did you agree with Vanguard? Well, one of the challenges, of course, ETFs and mutual funds don't mature. So when you're a bond investor, you want to look at something like a laddered strategy where you know your bond's going to mature and get your money back. In an ETF bond fund, it'll have a a negative correlation typically to equity markets return or much lower correlation, uh, but it doesn't mature. Uh, And that means when the index has bonds coming out of it, they buy new bonds and the duration of your ETF or your portfolio remains at what the index is. And so it's very, very different than actually owning underlying individual bonds. Uh, So there's some challenges there too. And really people need to understand the risks involved when they're getting into uh, investing in ETFs. Thanks very much, Larry Berman, the Chief Investment Officer of ETF Capital Management and the host of Berman's Call. My pleasure. 